have you ever wondered why some designers will design an outfit and it will not sit properly on the body of their clients as a good designer when you're making an outfit it should sit properly on the body of your client check out this part the dress that i wore it is one of our outfits it should sit properly on the body of your client now if it does not sit properly that means there is a problem and what could be the problem i am here to share with you one of the reasons why a client will design an outfit and it will not sit properly on the body of their client now one of the reasons is on able to read a tape measure it's april as an upcoming designer you will require to know what each lines mean in this what each lines mean do you understand now in the course of this training i will be using this part with yours with us the inches part i will not be using the centimeter part i will only be using this inches part and this is what we have this is an inch this is one inch this is two inches this is three inches this is four inches all the way to 60 inches now we have tape rule that comes longer than this one that that has 80 inches the one that can accommodate 120 inches now in between all these inches we have some tiny tiny lines you can see very well we have some tiny tiny lines in between all these inches now these tiny lines what are they called as a designer you will require to know their names because it will not be nice for you to just approximate the measurement of your client because you don't know it that because if you approximate obviously the the uh, what's it called the clothes will now come out bigger than expected did you understand do you really want to know how to read the tape room? then stay tuned till the end of the video My name is Abigail from Abirada Apparel. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing with family and friends. I'm so glad. And back to our discussion. How do you read your tape rule? Now, as you are watching this video, I expect you to bring out your tape rule. Check in between the lines that is from 0 to 1, or you check in between 1 and 2. Whatever lines you have here, you're having the same one. And in between one and two, it is still the same reading of inches. You understand? And I have drawn the diagram on the board as you can see. If you count it very well, you discover that we have seven lines in between point zero and one. Check out your table very well. You discover that we have seven lines in between. Now, another thing I want you to capture is this in between. This point is zero plus point one itself. How many lines do we have? We have eight lines. If I start counting, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, another thing I want you guys to know is this. How many blocks do we have from this point zero? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, that is going to be my denominator. This is going to be my denominator. Did you understand? Now, because we have eight box, this is forming to be my denominator. Now, we will refer us back to our secondary school days where we have our fractions. Now, in our secondary school days, you know what fractions is now. This is something, like, this is a fraction. And this is decimal points. This is a decimal, rather. This is a decimal and this is a fraction. Now I will be using this to get the value of all these lines in between. Now how do we get this? How do we get this our uh, fractions? Now because we have eight boxes here, we already get our denominator. Did you understand? We already get our denominator. Now how do we get our numerator? We, it's it's going to be the value that we are looking for. Remember that the denominator is the whole number that we have, while the numerator is the part that we are considering. Back to our primary school days, okay? <laughs> we are not adults now, but you will need that knowledge in fashion designing. That is why I need to take you back to it. 
Now, because I'm considering this point, this is zero. This is going to be my one. This is the first line that I have, and it's going to be my number one. This is the second line that I have. It's going to be my number two. Now, because this is my number one, it's going to be my numerator. One all over what? One all over eight. The next one is going to be two all over eight. The next one is going to be three all over eight. Another one is going to be four all over eight. The next one is going to be five all over eight. The next one is going to be six all over eight. The next one is going to be seven all over eight. And the last one is going to be eight all over eight. Anything that zero is being the denominator is still zero. That is why we have something like this. Did you understand? Now this first one, one all over eight, standing still. The next one is two all over eight. This two all over eight. Remember in our secondary school days, if you have two even numbers that is on top of each other, as in that is like a fraction like this. Maybe you have you have something like ten all over five. This, this is a odd number. This is even number. But something is common in between the two of them, which is no, number five. You can have five year one, eh, five year one and five year two. You will be having two odd number. And how many? You can still divide this. Two divided by one, you have two. So that means five, ten divided by five, you will be having two. Did you understand what I'm talking about? Please. You will have this video to yourself. You need to watch this video over and over again because if you don't know how to read table you, you, and you approximate unnecessarily, it will tend to add to the measurement of your clients. Because we'll be dealing with all these numbers, all these figures, all these lines. If we get to a point that we will need them when we are doing our practicals, when we are doing our yes practicals, you understand. That is why I need to, as in take the time for you to be able to understand it. So back to my discussion, I said this one, this, these are two uh, even numbers, it can still be divided. Now what is common in between these two numbers? It is two. So I will use this two to divide this denominator. I will have two year one. This one will give me one all over four. Now this three all over eight, this three that is the numerator is odd number. And the one on the down part is even number. So I cannot divide them. Because it cannot be divided, it will stand still. That is 3 all over 8. Because this one too cannot be divided, I will see it will stand still like that, 1 all over 8. Now the next one I have is 4 all over 8. These two numbers are even numbers. It can be divided. I can use 2 to, to divide this, what is it called, 4. And still use 2 to divide this. I can still use that same 4 to divide the two of them. How many 4 can we have here? We have 1. How many 4 can we have here? We have 2. So that means this one is going to give me one all over two. Please and um, please and um, please and um, please watch this video very well. It is very, very important if you want to start a fashion designing. Now, the next one is five all over eight. The numerator number is odd number. It cannot be divided. The, the denominator number is even number. So there is nothing we can do about that. We just have to leave it like that. The next one is six all over eight. Now, this is all about it. Something is common in between the two numbers. What is that? That is 2. 2 can divide 6. It's going to give us 3. 2 can divide 8. It's going to give us 4. So that means we have 3 all over 4. Did you understand me? Now, the next one is 7 all over 8. What is 7 is odd number. It cannot be divided. 8 is even number. So I will leave it like that. There's nothing we can do about it. Oh, oh, there's nothing you can do about it. 7 all over 8 is standing still. 5 all over 8 is standing still. 3 all over 4 cannot be divided anymore because 2 can go in 4, but 2 can never go in 3. Did you understand? 3 all over 8, 3 can go in 3, but 3 can never go in 8. So it still stands still. Now the last one is 8 all over 8. Automatically, 8 all over 8 is giving us 1. So that is why we come up with this number. I'm going to rewrite everything we have on the board now. It is very, very easy. So what we have on the board, the first one is zero.
Now the first one is zero. The next line is what? One all over eight. One all over eight. The next line, if you check your paper very well, you discover that the next line after one all over eight is longer than this line. It signifies something. Did you understand? It signifies something. The shorter the denominator, the longer the line on our table. Please, I want you to know that the shorter our denominator, as in the, the little our denominator is in between this one and this one, you know that 8 is still the highest. So, the, the, how am, am I going to put this sentence? How valueless your denominator is, that is how long your lines is going to be. Check your table, you discover that I'm telling you the truth. Now, the next line is going to be. 3 all over 4. Oh, sorry, 3 all over 8, rather. You have 3 all over 8, and the next one is going to be 1 all over 2. Check your table, you discover that after this point is 0 and point 0.1, the longer, longest line is this half. And it was because it's the half. See? The denominator, the uh, denominator is shorter. So that's why the line is longer. So the next one is. 5 all over 8. Next one is going to be 3 all over 4. Next one is going to be 7 all over 8. Why the last one is going to be 1. Now, if you want to convert, there are some numbers here that can be converted to decimal. Now, do you, this 1 all over 4. You can alternatively, alternatively call it 0 0.25. Now, this one all over 2, you can alternatively call it 0 0.5. And this 3 all over 4, you can as well call it 0 0.75. Now, I love dealing with 0 0.0, .0 point because it's 0 0.25, 0 0.180, 0 0.80. It's, 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 it's easy to pronounce. It's compared to 1.8 for, for 8. That has been converted to 0.5. Did you understand? It's, it's 0 0.5 is easier to pronounce than 7 eighths of an inch. Did you understand? So you might be hearing me telling you pronouncing 0 0.25. I just want you to know that I'm talking about where a quarter of an inch. Now, what is all these numbers being called? One eighth of an inch. One eighth of an inch. This is a quarter of an inch. This is three eighths of an inch. And this is half. It's 0 0.5. Now this one is five eighths of an inch. This one is three quarter of an inch. You can as well call it 0 0.75. The next one is seven eighths of an inch. And this is one inch. Did you understand? So in case I have to check out 21 eighths, you get to know that the 20 is the old number, why this one is the fractions. After the 20, the 1 8 that follow is 21 8. Now, in case I tell you that you should look for 48 7 8, it means that after 48 inches, the next seven lines, the next seven lines, after 48 inches, the next seven lines is my 48 7 8. I hope you're able to understand my explanation as I've given it in the video. Please and um, please watch this video over and over again. As a fashion starter, you tend not to understand that at, as in at the first attempt or first watch, rather. You tend not to understand, but please be kind. So watch it over and over again if you can. So when you watch it every now and then, you test yourself. There is no point if you cannot test yourself if you understand the training or not. Now, if you test yourself, take a paper, check out what you can do, and after you've done that, come back to the video, maybe you get it right. And if I've gotten it right, I congratulate you. That is what makes me happy as a teacher. Did you understand? So, till I see you on my next video, be good, I remain a video from my brother, Farah. Bye. Please, have you subscribed to my channel? Kindly subscribe. That's one of the things I request of you. Please subscribe to my channel. Likes and comments drop. So you can share this video with your family and friends. Till I see you on my next video. Be good. I remain a video.